Hey everyone, in this video, I wanted to quickly explain what is Azure Hybrid Benefit. And I can think about, as an organization, I've made an investment. Now today, I have some physical boxes. Those physical boxes have a certain number of physical processors. And those physical processors have a certain number of cores. And then I've purchased software. For example, I've purchased Windows to run as the operating system on these boxes. I've purchased SQL Server. And I've been running that and I'm happy with that. But now I'm thinking about leveraging the cloud. So I'm moving to this world where what I actually now want to do is create things in Azure. And ideally, I'd like to get some benefit out of that existing investment I've made. I've got my software insurance or a subscription for these licenses through some subscription model. And I'd like to be able to take advantage of that. So let's start with Windows. Now, obviously, with Windows, we have two different versions available to us. We have the idea that, hey, I've got standard, but then we also have the enter, uh, data center. So I have data center as well. And the reason I'm separating this is there are some different rights we have as we go through this. Now, what I can do with these licenses is I can purchase them on premises either at a processor level or more recently, we think about a core level. And I would buy a certain number of packs of these. Now, to get started with the Azure Hybrid Benefit and bring those to Azure, at minimum to start, it's either two processors or 16 cores worth. So it's basically I'm picking a combination of these and then I can have additional processor licenses or sets of eight cores. Now this is now going to map to, when I think about leveraging this in Azure, to the ability to apply that license to Azure virtual machines. And the ratio I'm gonna get is essentially, hey, if it's two processors or 16 cores, that gets me the ability to run two eight vCPU virtual machines, or it could be one 16 virtual CPU virtual machine. For every additional, hey, well, it's one eight virtual CPU virtual machine. So I can really leverage this as, hey, I could create a VM with eight virtual CPUs, another one with eight virtual CPUs, or one with 16. Here, hey, I can create one with eight for each additional set. I could stack them. I could absolutely create a virtual machine with 32 virtual CPUs, because yes, I can do that stacking. But this would require 32 cores worth of on-premises license. So that's gonna use 32 core. Now, one super important point about all of this is when I'm using these licenses in Azure, every VM that I'm applying this to must map to a minimum of eight cores. So if I went and create a virtual machine, for example, with two virtual CPUs, and I said, hey, I'm applying the Azure hybrid benefit, it is not using two cores worth of on-prem. It's still gonna use eight. So it's a really important point to understand. I can't take, hey, I've got eight cores here and cre create eight one virtual CPU VMs or four two virtual CPMs. It doesn't work that way. Every VM I apply the Azure Hybrid Benefit to at minimum has to be eight. Then if it has more than eight virtual CPUs, well, it needs that appropriate number of cores. 
So in this example, if I created a virtual machine with two virtual CPUs, that still needs eight. So it's still using up eight cores of license. So this is a super, super important thing to understand. And when I apply this Azure Hybrid Benefit, what it means for these virtual machines is I pay the base compute price. I, the same as if it was Linux. I don't pay for the Windows Server guest OS additional price on that consumption anymore. I just pay the base compute price. So I'm saving that license money there. That's the key point of that. Now, the reason I kind of drew the data center and standard in different colors is with standard licenses, it's or. I can use the licenses on-prem or I can use them in Azure. Now, what I do get is a 180-day grace period, i.e., hey, I'm migrating from on-prem to Azure, so, hey, I can apply that Azure hybrid benefit to the VMs I'm creating in Azure and not have to pay the Windows Server license and still run them on-prem for 180 days to help me do my migration. With data center, it's and. I can still use the license on-prem and I can use that license benefit in Azure as well. So hey, I've got a whole bunch of cores I've licensed because I use virtualization, I run Windows Server in the guests. I can still carry on running those on-prem. And hey, as a bonus, I can also use that number of cores against stuff I have running in Azure. So that's one of those really nice benefits of that. Now, if you was using dedicated host, so dedicated host is where, hey, I buy out the whole box, and that box actually has a certain number of physical processors in it, well, I can do the same thing. I can use this same sort of logic if I do it at a VM level, i.e. I'm just focusing on the VMs running on it. I'm not trying to do anything special because it's dedicated host. There's nothing special I'm doing just because I've bought out the entire host. But I do have another option. Or what I can do is for Windows, data center only. I cannot do this with standard licenses. I can actually buy out the entire box worth of virtualization and then run an unlimited number of Windows VM where I can apply the Azure hybrid benefit to. Now the ratio here is a one-to-one. -one. For every data center core, it would apply to a dedicated host core. But here's the important thing. With dedicated hosts, and I've got this page showing here, when I get the dedicated host, notice it shows me a certain number of physical cores, in this case, 64. But not all of those cores are actually used for virtual machines. There's a certain amount of processing is required just to run the virtualization, the management overhead. So I get a certain number of available virtual CPUs. In this case, it's 112. That's the number I have to actually license with data centers because that's really the only ones I'm getting benefit from. And a key point, this 112 is with hyper-threading. So these are logical processors that map to virtual CPUs, but the number of actual cores is half that number. So in this case, it's 112, half that is 56. So I don't have to license 64 cores, I have to license half the number of available virtual CPUs. So in this case, it would be 56. So this is the really important point. It's the number of virtual CPUs available divided by two, because that's actually the number of cores that's being used for this particular workload. So hopefully that makes sense in terms of, hey, with Windows, it's really, hey, I bring those packs, I use them and apply them based on the number I have to Windows workloads, but every VM is gonna be a minimum of eight cores. If I have 16 cores worth of licenses, I can create two VMs and apply that. Even if those VMs were only got two virtual CPUs each, that's it. I can't go and create 16 one CPU VMs or eight two virtual CPU VMs. Every VM is using up eight cores worth of license at a minimum. So that's a really important thing to understand. And then I can think about, 
Well, I've got SQL Server. So with SQL Server, again, there's really two different types of license. We have the idea of standard, and it's on this one we have enterprise. And obviously, the enterprise is that higher level license, it's got more features, all that kind of goodness. And when I think of in Azure, well, in Azure, there's a whole set of different SQL related uh, resources. There's obviously Azure SQL database, there's Azure SQL managed instance, there's SQL in an IaaS VM, there's Azure Data Factory, SSIS. So I can apply these licenses to all of these different things. Now, once again, with this, we're going to be thinking about the cores. So I have a certain number of cores, and I could have a core of enterprise, I could have a core of standard. Now, when I think about these services in Azure, many times they have different tiers of offering. And what I'm going to really focus on here is it's all about virtual CPUs, and there's a general purpose SKU, there's also a hyperscale SKU, and, but then there's a business critical. And when I think about these ratios, one core of enterprise actually lets me use four virtual CPUs of the general purpose or the hyperscale, but only one of business critical. Whereas with standard, a single core lets me have one general purpose or hyperscale, but it's only a quarter <laughs> of a business critical, i.e. if I only have standard and I want to apply it to business critical, I need four cores of standard for every one virtual CPU of business critical. So that, that's the mapping, that's how that works for SQL Server. And just like with regular Windows, I could apply it to dedicated host as well. Once again, it could just be at the VM level, in which case it works exactly the same. Or if I did want to apply it at the box and buy it out, well, it has to be SQL Enterprise, and it works exactly the same way. One to one of Enterprise for the number of virtual CPUs available, divided by two. So it's exactly the same thing. And that's it. That's Azure Hybrid Benefit. The key point is whether it's Windows or SQL, those licenses have to be covered by Software Assurance or a subscription via a CSP, some subscription program, if that software assurance or that subscription expires, I have to stop using that Azure Hybrid Benefit. I can go and apply that Azure Hybrid Benefit to existing resources. Um, that's something I can absolutely do. But this is the benefit. Hey, I've done this investment. I want to bring that investment to Azure. But really, it's your responsibility to keep track of that. And it's also important to really understand how these mappings do work, especially with the VMs. And the fact that it doesn't matter really if I have less than eight virtual CPUs, it's still using up eight cores worth of that on-premises set of licenses. So I have to be very cognizant when I map that to make sure I'm staying in compliance. So that was it. And one important thing I really should stress is when I think about the SQL, it's always an or relationship. Hey, I can use the license on-prem or I can use it in Azure. And I do get that 180 day grace just like I did with Windows. So that was it. As always, I hope this was useful. Until next video, take care.